We now come to the second oral question. Lord Barclay. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name and the order paper. I call the Minister, Baroness Vere of Norberton. My Lords, the Government welcomes the Transport Focus Report on the future of rail commuting post-COVID. We are working closely with the industry on a range of initiatives to benefit the passenger, including looking at solutions that offer better value and convenience for those who commute flexibly. Lord Barclay. My Lords, I am grateful to the Minister for that response, um, but I wonder if I could press her a little further. Um, has, has the Department of Transport actually received proposals from the train operating companies to promote fast flexible fares to encourage passengers to return and for less frequent commuters. And um, will the department allow any of the train operators who want to implement trials of such options? The government proactively asked the train operating companies to come up with ideas um, for fares and, and other innovative passenger-led solutions um, as we come out of COVID. What we're doing at the moment is we're building the evidence base to support the proposals, for example, on, on flexible season tickets, and we're assessing the potential commercial impact um, of these new products. Um, how they are implemented uh, will be uh, published in due course. I call Lord Davis of Brixton. My Lords, would the Minister agree that even before the pandemic, we were seeing big changes in working patterns? A growing proportion of the working population no longer expect to go to the workplace five days a week. So will she accept that the government needs to show more leadership here so that we can move on from ticketing systems that reflect the work patterns of the 1950s? Well, also, I believe that the government is showing leadership in this issue, uh, which is precisely why we proactively approached the train operating companies and made it absolutely clear to them that we are going to see a very different type of train system going forward, one that is uh, really focused on the passenger, uh, one that provides punctual and reliable train services, but at a, at a price that is fair to the taxpayer and fair to the passenger. Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick. My Lords. The noble lady the minister referred to the government looking at a number of solutions. Could the noble lady the minister indicate if those solutions include enhanced ventilation systems and particle filtration and daily uh, air disinfection measures as part of a means to encourage people to uh, use the trains in a safe manner? The noble lady is quite right that the one thing that we're going to have to do uh, to get people back onto the railways indeed and onto the public transport system as a whole is to improve passenger confidence in the system. One of those ways is by being at the forefront of being able to provide the, the most up-to-date air filtration systems and also provide the best enhanced cleaning uh, 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 contracts. Lord Moylan. Uh, my lords, uh, noble lords may have uh, wonderful and imaginative ideas for playing around with fares, and there may indeed be a commercial case for flexible season tickets. But does my noble friend agree that the future of the railways is best secured if they maximise their own revenues, and so the fundamental purpose of commuted fares and season tickets must, must as with airlines, always be to increase yields to the railways, thus saving expense for the taxpayer? I somewhat agree with, with my noble friend in that, you know, if this were a purely commercial, if this were being done in purely commercial terms, um, that, that, that would be the case. Um, and we certainly do want to minimise the amount of subsidy from the taxpayer where appropriate. However, the state might also want to intervene for other reasons and use pricing levers, for example, to encourage modal shift, get people out of their cars and onto the rail, particularly for certain types of journeys, and that might include commuting. Baroness Randerson. My Lords, the roads are congested and the trains are empty. Does the noble lady of the minister accept that, as this report shows, passengers will only return to the railways if there is reform and modernisation of ticketing that is better value for money? As the government now controls the railways, does the, does the minister accept that the government needs a greater sense of urgency on this modernisation. I'm afraid the government does not accept that. Um, we are 
uh, undertaking uh, rail reform, as the noble lady will know, it would probably not be the right time to do it right at this moment, in the midst of a, a pandemic. But as the course of the pandemic uh, becomes much clearer, we will continue to work, as we have done so for quite a while now, with Keith Williams on his Root and Branch review. We remain in close contact with him. Uh, he fully supports the, the um, Irmas that we've put in recently. The noble lady also said that the roads are congested. congested. I don't know if she's been outside recently, but they are not. Young of Cookham. My Lord, any uh, trial flexi season ticket system needs government approval before it can start. And can my noble friend uh, tell your Lordships whether she is looking at a national scheme with common rules to avoid complexity, or whether each individual franchise will develop its own scheme? And can she ensure that any new scheme will be contactless in order to keep down costs and save time? My noble friend is trying to push me a little further every time, and on, on this I cannot uh, 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 say to the noble lord whether it will be a national scheme um, or we will have uh, uh, competitive schemes from different rail operators. Um, certainly a national scheme would be simpler for the passenger, so each will have their advantages and their disadvantages. Again, we are looking at those um, at this current time. But smart ticketing, which I think is the sort of digital solution that the noble lord refers to, is, is absolutely at the heart of what we want to be able to achieve. We really need to get to a stage where we don't have paper tickets where we have smart ticketing systems that can, can cope with any season ticket and indeed any ticket at all. Lord Barclay of Knighton. Uh, my Lords, here in this part of uh, Mid Wales, just about the only way for many people to get to Birmingham, Manchester, London, is to take the rather well, beautiful Heart of Wales line, which then goes up to Manchester. The, the problem is, as I see it, quite apart from the fact you sometimes have to flag down the train or tell the driver when you went to want to get off, not an intercity problem. The problem is that the fares and timetable are not always coordinated to allow uh, a, a, an affordable way of, of commuting to these cities. Could the government look at this when they're talking uh, to the, um, the companies, uh, well, indeed their own, could they talk to their own people about how we could actually make this work better? Um, train services and fares are, of course, devolved in Wales, but I do recognise the point that the noble lord is making about passengers who want to go from Wales uh, into England, for example, for work. And I would encourage the noble lord potentially to raise this issue with Sir Peter Hendy in his Union Connectivity Review, because it's really important that for, for people that need to travel for, uh, for employment reasons, that the means of travel are there in terms of the services, but also that the fares fit as well. Lord Rosser. Yes. Um, how will the pending increase in fares encourage people back onto our trains, bearing in mind that much passenger business is optional leisure, leisure travel and commuter traffic will also become more price sensitive as home working for at least part of the week is likely to become a permanent option for many? And secondly, if cheaper fare promotions are going to be used to try and encourage people back onto our trains, who under the present contractual arrangements between the government and the train operating companies would have the final say on what those cheap fare promotions should be. Would it be the government or the train operating companies? The recent increase in, in, in fares was 2.6%, uh, 1%, which was 1% um, uh, above inflation. Uh, this is actually the lowest increase for four years, and in, in addition, the government delayed the increase by two months to the 1st of March. But it is the case that the taxpayers have been spectacularly generous to the railways in terms of their support over the COVID period. We must ensure that there is a good balance between the taxpayer and the passengers, and so we are content with a small increase in rail and regulated rail fares. Uh, with regards to the um, potential schemes and other measures that may be put in place, the government will be working very closely with the train operating companies. All ideas are welcome, and when it is time to get people back on public transport, we will put those in place. Lord Greaves. My Lords, the recent um, pulling of the funding by the government for the Transport for the North's scheme for smart ticketing across the north of England seems extraordinary in view of what the Minister has already said. Is this not a blow for the railway across the north of England? And is it not also an indication that levelling up is no more than a slogan and has no substance? And will the minister go away and get it reversed? 
Not of course, my lords. TFN was allocated £150 million pounds at the 2015 spending review uh, to do this integrated and smart travel programme. It was always the case that that funding was going to expire at the end of the current financial year. To date, TFN has managed to uh, spend £24 million, pounds, and that is a good start. But, my lords, we're now considering how best to deliver more effectively, and perhaps more quickly, a rollout of smart ticketing to improve passenger services across the north. My Lords, the time allowed for this question has elapsed, and I apologise to the two noble Lords who weren't able to be called.